We move from water to land to a place where exotic wildlife thrives. But beyond the exhibits at the Nashville Zoo, hiding in the wooded areas are animals avoiding the crowds of visitors and scientists working hard to try and help them. This is our antenna. This is gonna kinda help amplify the signal so that we can zero in on where she is. The search is on for wild animals roaming free across the landscape of the Nashville Zoo with nothing to prevent them from leaving the property. The National Zoo uh, consists of about 188 acres, with uh, quite a bit of that being undeveloped land. The gators are still well guarded. The bears remain behind their enclosures, and the giraffes are obviously visible. Once we find the animal, we are going to collect a whole bunch of different variables, uh, measurements around the animal to look at its habitat selection. Fortunately, all four of the hunted creatures carry tracking devices, leading to a quick capture of the first one. Right here, right at the floor, the base of the tree. And there it is, perhaps the least feared reptile of the forest, the common eastern box turtle, subject of an ongoing natural history study at the zoo. So we have a lot of native wildlife here. Although we are a zoo where we have all sorts of animals from all over the world, we also want to be good stewards of the wildlife we have here on site, uh, living in the wildlands of the, the zoo property. The staff has counted as many as 99 turtles on the property, with 10 of them now wearing trackers, including the four adult females being monitored today. With our radio telemetry studies, we can see if these turtles do leave the property, if they're residents here exclusively, if there are turtles from other adjacent green spaces that are coming into the property. Um, these are all questions that we're hoping to answer utilizing our research here. We will now just kind of check the microhabitat that she's living in. So you've got leaf litter, vegetation, rocks, sticks, that kind of stuff. We're just gonna measure what she's decided to live in at this moment. With a possible lifespan in the wild of 40 to 50 years, some of the box turtles in this green space may have been here well before the zoo was built. And as the box turtles are temporarily boxed up, all the animals on zoo property seem relatively safe. We don't have very many animals actually enter, or box turtles entering zoo exhibits. We have had it happen a handful of times, yes. but... We've they, had a couple in the rhino exhibit. Yeah, <laughs> but they've come out unscathed. It's not been an issue. <laughs> But the future of the box turtle is definitely an issue. Box turtles, they are a fairly common species, especially in Middle Tennessee. Um, however, there's uh, pretty good evidence that they're declining range-wide uh, for a, a number of factors. Um, uh, two of the major factors are what a fancy term called subsidized predation, which essentially means there's a lot of Little critters like raccoons and rats and crows that eat turtle eggs in urban areas like the like like in the city, uh, and so it's a hard um, it's hard life for a baby turtle when there's a lot of raccoons and other critters around. Uh, also, road mortality, so being hit by cars, is a huge factor when it comes to turtles. The box turtle endeavor is getting extra help from a researcher with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Today, she's swabbing the turtles to test for disease. If they are, like their population is disease ridden, then it can be a really big problem. Rainavirus is a, a super big killer of these turtles. And they're also very big in the pet trade. The males are so flashy and beautiful. So they, they're like very bright yellow on their face. Their eyes are these big red gorgeous eyes. And that's what the pet trade likes, that's what people like, and so they'll come get them out of the wild and just take them home, either for their own use or in mass quantities to be sold. The TWA considers eastern box turtles a species of greatest conservation need, so, uh, which is a, uh, a designation that's not quite endangered or threatened. It's basically they, they want to keep an eye on box turtle populations to make sure uh, that they're not declining to a level that they can't bounce back from. Of course, following reproduction of the turtles is another important part of the study. So the process includes spring visits to the zoo's veterinary hospital. We'll x-ray this animal, uh, all four of these animals. Uh, these are reproductive age female box turtles. And in x-ray, you can see shelled eggs uh, when, uh, if they do have eggs in their body. No eggs are visible on this day, but that's not a surprise since it's late in the breeding season. X-rays a month earlier brought optimism. We got baby turtles out there. Yeah, I know. So. I think she had she had five. Honey did. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then um, Shelby had four. 
basically, uh, we want to know if the, the turtle populations here on site are healthy, and if they aren't healthy, if there's things we can do to help them, because it's an overall uh, decline of the species that we're trying to mitigate here on the zoo. This is an important but somewhat challenging job with weeds and thorns, poisonous plants and insects, but it's the kind of work people choose because they enjoy it. I love turtles and eastern box turtles are some of the coolest looking different patterns, individual turtles that you could find. They have such different personalities, different reactions to almost everything. Their shell patterns are different, their markings on their necks and legs and everything is all different. So they're just very unique and just very, very fun to find. And the study has inspired a bit of fun throughout the zoo ranks. The only thing I would say about my turtles is that they probably have the coolest names. <laughs> I come up with some really fun ones. Just for me too, fun names make it easier to remember them the next time you find them. Sweet little girl. This is Hermina, right? Yes, it's Hermina. I don't get to name all of them. I do name a lot of them. Um, but anybody that finds a turtle that spots one is gets the chance to name them. So that's kind of their, their reward for telling us about a turtle that they found. And this passion to protect the turtles seems to have the support of many zoo visitors. We have some eastern box turtles that are part of the Nashville Zoo collection that are non-releasable animals that uh, experienced an injury and they can't be released. And our department that provides uh, shows, they've told me that the public gets almost more excited about box turtles than some of the more, uh, more exotic species that they encounter. People love box turtles. Bye, lady. Good luck. <laughs> As a side note, Michaela Bass is not only a TWRA researcher, she's also a graduate student at Tennessee State University. And she's basing her master's degree thesis on the study of the turtles at the zoo and the Ellington Agricultural Center. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation in association with Rockwater TV.